Okay. Good morning. We welcome you to worship uh, with us here at United Lutheran, Lincoln, Nebraska. We give thanks that during this time of social distancing, we are able to gather in the Lord's life-giving presence in order to give thanks for his blessings of life and fellowship. Before we worship, though, we want you to please know a reminder for all of us that our giving is as important now as it ever was. Although it is easy to think of stewardship as an act that is performed in response to worship, it is more than this, as we all know. It is the commitment of the baptized to the body of Christ, the proclamation of the word and our ministry to the vulnerable at all times, which never stops. That ministry continues whether we are worshiping together in one building or not. For those who have maintained this commitment during this difficult time, we are thankful. The body of Christ is thankful. We give thanks for your presence on this fifth Sunday at Easter, as well to all mothers and mother figures out there. We wish you a happy Mother's Day. May you be the center of this day, along with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, let us worship at this hour. Let us receive life together through the Word of God. Let us begin our service with a word of gratitude, the litany of gratitude. Let us continue together, baptized into the body of Jesus Christ and nourished by his supper. We are united in gratitude, living everywhere the love of the triune God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together at this hour. The risen Lord Jesus Christ is with you, and, and also, also with you. you. Give us grace to love one another, 
to follow in the way of his commandments and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2-10. through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going, Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks today for all the gifts that you've given. But most importantly, the gift of Jesus Christ, Son of God, as the way to the Father and the Father's home. We give thanks, gracious God, that you have embraced us in Jesus Christ. That you not just reveal the way, but you guide us there embracing us the whole way. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I am one of those who really enjoys, in Robert Frost's terms, taking the path less trod. When I come to a fork in the road, I enjoy the path less worn. And what I enjoy about traveling with my wife, Kim, is no matter where we go, whether we're heading to Colorado or Minnesota or across town for errands, we hardly ever take the same route twice. Whether it's discovering new towns or neighborhoods and streets down which we've never been, it's always favored over the same old, same old. Nothing beats the joy of discovery. The joy of appreciating new places, new perspectives, looking at new buildings, new neighborhoods. Even a simple trip to Omaha consists of a conversation in which it is asked every single time, which way? The interstate? Highway 6 through Ashland? If so, then what? As we say, north through the ancestral lands of Guam and Utan? or through Millard, or 370 to Bellevue, so that we can enjoy South Omaha, and eventually come up 75, and eventually 13th Street. The beauty of travel is that no destination has a single route. The joy of travel is the appreciation of the different routes. The joy lies, lies in traveling, and thus appreciating as many of the routes as is possible to that one destination. Now, such is not the case with the Father. That is, at its core, the truth conveyed by the Gospel text today. There is but one way to the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have really known me, you will know the Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Now immediately upon speaking this truth, upon hearing it, there are some who lurch in knee-jerk fashion and assert that such an assertion, such a position, is nothing, for, nothing more than a form of exclusivism. form of exclusivism, no other way to the Father. And certainly, if this is a form of exclusivism, this must lead, ultimately, to judgment, and perhaps even to hate speech on those who don't follow the way, those who take another route. 
but you couldn't be more wrong and uninformed. That's not what the text is telling us. Let me explain. There is no question that there are many roots to God. And what those roots have in common is that they start from here and they work upwards to God, so to speak. Those avenues are filled with prescriptions and rituals and various steps, various legal requirements and religious rituals, perhaps. Or maybe even it's a path of required merit building and virtue cultivation. But then we have to ask how much is enough? Or perhaps they involve various forms of meditation and reflection and focus and self-diminishment. Much of what we call mysticism involves just that, self-diminishment on the way to making room for God within ourselves. And what these various avenues also have in common is the multitude of ways by which the presence of God is perceived, by which arrival at God is perceived. From bright light to abysmal darkness to an experience of oneness with the universe, which involves a complete loss of self, so extensive that being absorbed with the universe, the self no longer remains. A drop of water returning to the ocean, so to speak. From complete yogi-like presence to white-haired rulers whose judgment really never ends, some gods in the name of grace are nothing other than expressions of our own permissiveness. Some paths involve a God who requires an accounting of your actions when all is said and done, when we get at the end of the trail. Maybe that's our problem. But lastly, what all these paths and gods have in common is this. These gods are a guess. They're a guess. And the paths to them depend upon us to both begin and complete the journey. How do I know I've started? When do I know I arrived? What is being asserted today is the exact opposite. Yes, there are many paths to God, but if it is the loving Father who created the universe and you out of love, if he is who you are talking about, Jesus is the way. The triune God is not a many-faced guess, and the path to the triune God is not a multi-course buffet table. In Jesus Christ, God the Father is revealed to us. In Jesus Christ, the Father's house is open to us. And in Jesus Christ, the path to God the Father is both revealed to us and becomes a path who shepherds us home. In Jesus Christ, we come to understand that at the core of creation is not just any God, but a loving Father who yearns for us, who beckons us home. Jesus Christ is the loving Father's way to us and our way back to his house. Let us say it this way. The good news proclaimed to us today is that the triune God we worship and the path who takes us to him who embraces us, are one and the same. When you know Jesus, not only have you come to know the loving Father of the universe, but the path to the Father's house has embraced you and gathered you in. Now, if that somehow sounds exclusive and unfair to you, perhaps you haven't been listening. Or maybe Christianity just isn't for you. Grace upon grace. Grace that gathers you in. Amen.
let us continue as we confess the Apostles' Creed together, the faith that binds us together. Let us confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, let us continue as a people of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, remind us again and again each day that in the crucified and risen Christ, the loving Father of the universe has been revealed, and not just revealed, but the way has been shown to us in Jesus Christ. But remind us that in Jesus Christ, it is not just a path, but he is the way that embraces us and shepherds us to the Father's house. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in this time of social isolation, we give thanks for all of those who have kept the church in its ministry moving. We give thanks for the giving of the church. We give thanks for the generosity. We give thanks for all of those who have conducted services and made them possible. Gracious God, we give thanks. The ministry continues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, this time of knowledge coming at us from all quarters, medical knowledge, economic knowledge, each seeking to be our master. We pray for wisdom as a people, as a society, on how to move forward. We are reminded that risk, though it be diminished, is never eliminated. When things are completely safe, well, we know that that is probably never. To think that we are able to live in a world free of risk, we know is a delusion. Give us the wisdom to move forward. The wisdom to navigate this time, to walk with diminished risk, but to learn how to navigate the risk that exists. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Gracious God, at this time we lift up first line responders, nurses, doctors, social workers. We lift up those who continue their deliveries that our economy, though hobbled, may be supplied with basic needs. We lift up those without jobs at this time yearning to be back in the workforce. We are reminded of what a job does so much, not just financially, but in terms of our identity, our self-esteem, our ability to contribute both to our family and to the society at large. During this time, gracious God, we lift up parents who have become teachers. We lift up teachers who have learned to teach via different methods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift up those who serve on behalf of our protection from law enforcement to military to other branches. We give thanks for those who sacrifice their lives for our safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift up our government leadership from federal to state to local. May they continue to work beyond the petty tribalisms of American politics to govern by a common wisdom which applies to all. We give thanks for those who work together, who come together, and serve the diversity, the wonderful, wonderful diversity and range of contexts this nation provides. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, God of healing, God of life, we lift up all who are in need of healing mental and emotional healing, healing from addiction, the whole spectrum of addictions, those in need of healing from abusive family systems, we pray for self-differentiation and self-esteem, healthy egos. Gracious God, we pray for healing. We pray that we may be instruments of that healing in our day-to-day -day lives, suspended between life-giving word and those who are vulnerable and in need. May we be healing agents, conduits of your love, Gracious God, we lift up those who mourn the loss of loved ones during this time. 
especially those who are unable to receive closure at this time with regard to funeral services, public gatherings, and their limits. We pray for healing. And we pray that your gospel, your good news, your resurrection hope may be heard by all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious God, teach us to one pray, teach us to pray with one voice the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as we come to a conclusion of this service of worship, Receive the benediction, the blessing, the good word, and share this blessing with all of those whom you encounter. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shines upon you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and gives you his peace. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord by taking care of one another. Thanks be to God.